idea. I'm actually very proud of you. At this point, I feel like you're at a very a high, a good level in chemistry. But we haven't even done this concept, which some teachers do it in the first semester. I wait till the second semester to do it. And it's called the mole concept. And the mole concept is very, very big, okay? And even though you're already at a good level, chemistry-wise, when we get done with these three chapters in a row, three chapters in a row are gonna be based on the mole concept and the idea of mathematics, using numbers to understand chemistry. Now, some of you, I don't know how this happens. I've had people that get Bs and C pluses, and all of a sudden we do these chapters and they just come alive. And I would have thought this would have been the hardest part, and yet some people come alive and they just love the idea of using numbers and try to solve the puzzle with numbers. And I don't know why, it just is very unusual. So there are some of you that will actually see your grade go up, even though I consider this to be a harder material. All right, we're ready. All right, so anyway, uh, what I'd like you to do is, it's actually called chapter eight, and you don't have to worry about having your book right now, because today is an intro chapter. We're gonna introduce the chapter to you. And then later you can leaf through the book, and if you don't read, you can read, okay? But what we're gonna do is, um, this uh, three chapters in a row have to do with this one idea which changed, it literally changed chemistry. Everything you've done before, they figured out little things here and even some of the experiments they figured out things, but they didn't know, they didn't know exactly what was going on in chemistry. And uh, so these ideas that you're gonna see here, it made chemistry just explode. They started being able to answer questions they never thought they could answer. And it's actually the key uh, to understand a great deal of chemistry. So I'm gonna start this today, the lesson. And uh, it's called chapter eight. Uh, again, we don't have to have your book with you today, but I'll probably show some pictures in the chapter tomorrow and that kind of thing there. Now, one thing that uh, I'm gonna be doing when I'm teaching this, and I'm gonna be very honest with you, um, when I was in high school, I remember the teacher, and this was like 45 years ago. So if you think about that, whoa, oh, you're old. Okay, but it's so long ago, and I still clearly remember the teacher coming in, and, and he probably had graduated maybe five years from college, you know, so he was still kind of young teacher. But he came in and he said, well, today we're gonna do something uh, called, we're gonna talk about ELOMs. And I'm, okay, I was a nice student. I said, I just listen, <clears throat> Elams and Elams this and Elams that. And it wasn't until later I figured out, I didn't understand what he was talking about exactly, <clears throat> but I found out that he, when he was in college, he found the mole concept to be very difficult. And so he thought if he came out and said, I'm gonna teach the mole concept that we would be nervous. I didn't know what the mole concept was anyway. But he thought if he spelled a mole backwards and called it Elam, that we wouldn't be so nervous. But I looked back at that later, I said, hey, I didn't know what a mole was anyway. So but anyway, but he thought that it would help us by not saying the word mole, because as if I knew what that was, okay. So uh, anyway, I wanna show you also that even when I went to college, I feel confident I did not really understand the concept of the mole. Had I done a little bit of mathematics of the mole? Yeah, but I don't think I understand exactly why it changed chemistry. And I'd like to do that for you. I'd like to kind of show you the concept of the mole and then we'll do the mathematics and some of you will just take off like crazy. Now, one thing you may or may not like uh, about my lessons, uh, you're gonna hear me do this several times. I'll say, what world are you in? And sometimes the world we're going to be in is going to be called the little world. And you may think I'm messing with you. I'm not. Uh, because I can tell whether or not you understand the mole concept. If I ask you what world you're in and you give me the wrong answer, I know you don't understand. But there's going to be the little world and there's going to be the big, board, the big world. So let's see what happens. Let's go down to the little world. And what I'd like you to do is, let's take a look at hydrogen. 
and I'm gonna look at one hydrogen atom. So in the little world, I wish I could go down there and actually see it, but I can't. No one's ever done that. No one's ever go down to that little world and looked at an atom and tried to count how many protons. They can't do it. And here's what you do know. From another chapter, you know that there are hydrogen ions that have one proton and one electron, don't they? Is that true? Have you remember that in any, any chapter before? And as a matter of fact, I told you how to write the symbol. If you have one proton, you have to have hydrogen. And what was the mass? What is the mass number? What is the mass number of this isotope here? It would have been two, but if you remember, all the mass is in the nucleus. Electrons don't have any mass. So it's one, wasn't it? So what was the mass number of that isotope? It was one, wasn't it? Now, is that the only kind of hydrogen atoms that we know that exist in the universe? No, there was another drawing that you saw in your paper, and it had one proton, and it had one electron, and it had this other thing. What was that? What was the other thing in the nucleus? Neutron. And so what was the mass number for this isotope of hydrogen? It was two, wasn't it? One, two. And then there was another kind of hydrogen atom, one proton, one electron, and whoa, two neutrons. And what was that one? What was the mass number of that one? Three, wasn't it? And I know that you can't remember everything from the first semester, but these isotopes of hydrogen exist in nature, don't they? And they were the only ones that they gave special names to. The other isotopes like carbon-14, uranium-238, kind of boring names. But anybody, know, anybody happen to know the name of this guy? Protium. Whoops. Protium. Um, deuterium. And what about this guy? He's the only one that's radioactive. I'll put a little similar. He's radioactive, wouldn't he? Okay, what's his name? Tritium. Tritium. Okay, now, I'm still in a little word, aren't I? Everybody okay with that? Let me ask you this question. When I look up here on the periodic table and I look at hydrogen, I don't see one, two, or three. I see this number called 1.0079, whatever, 1.0079. What is that? Why is that on there? What is it? Somebody said it. What is it? So go ahead. Say, of what? Of the, of the uh, different isotopes of hydrogen, right? And so if you were gonna do an experiment with hydrogen, would all of them be protium? No. Would all of them be this? No. And what, but I do know this. If the average, if the average mass, and that's called, what do you call, this is called a mass number, but what do you call the average mass? Atomic mass, right. So, the average atomic mass is about 1.0079. Now, so far I haven't put any units on here. Uh, what is the mass of this guy? One what? And don't say grams because a paper clip has a mass of a gram, so you're in the big world if you talk about grams. That's right, one AMU, isn't that right? One AMU, and this guy is two. AMUs and this is three AMUs and the average mass of a hydrogen atom is 1.00797 AMUs. All right now remember an AMU is like uh, 10 to the minus 26 grams. It's incredibly small, incredibly small. Are you okay so far?
I think the average, though, what is the average between one, two, and three? What is the average? Two. In math class, it's two. So why don't I see a two up there? Because there's more ones than anything else. You're right. You are absolutely right. And there's not there's a whole lot more ones, aren't there? Yes. A whole lot more. Like out of a million, 999,990 of them would probably be a mass of one. And I might find eight of them with a mass of two. I might find one or two of them with a mass of three. That's what makes the average so close. Take a look at chlorine. I happen to know that chlorine only has two isotopes. One of them weighs 35 and one of them weighs, I'm sorry, and one of them weighs 36. But there's only two isotopes. What's that number tell me? 35.5. Wait, wait, wait. What do you think? What do you think? Yes, so what, there's only two isotopes and the average is 35.5. That's more 36 than 35. Not much. They're almost even, aren't they? Yeah, What's half of 35 and 36? Oh, 35.5. That's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. So I already know there's about half as many that weigh 35 as 36. Get that? But not for hydrogen. Get that? Okay, so now I'm ready to show you, I'm gonna go into the mole world. Are you ready? Does everybody remember this lesson, right? Let's go back to the little world. I'm still in the little world. One hydrogen atom. One hydrogen atom equals um, one AMU. And I could use the average, 1.0079. I could do that. I'm going to use one for right now to make it simpler. But I'm going to go visit another atom. One carbon atom. How much does he weigh? And I'll, I'll use whole numbers for right now, but anybody know? How much is carbon? Okay. Huh. So what do you notice if you compare that? If I were down in that little world and I picked up a hydrogen atom and I picked up a carbon atom, what, what can I say? Carbon what? Carbon is how many times heavier? Okay, tall times more massive or heavier. What do you want to use? That doesn't matter to me. Okay, now, say, okay, okay, I get it now. I get it. Now, let's go another one. Give me a thousand hydrogen atoms. But also give me a thousand carbon atoms. Okay, how much would a thousand hydrogen atoms weigh? That's right. And how about, um, how about this? Yes. So if I gave you the same number of hydrogen atoms, I give you a thousand hydrogen atoms and a thousand carbon atoms, you could still say what? Carbon still heavier. How much heavier? 12 times. Okay. How much would a million hydrogen atoms weigh? A million, a million AMs. And what about this one? Huh. What could I also say? All right. Ready? Okay, ready? Watch now. I think I'll go beyond a million. Let me go beyond a million. Oh, that's a big number. It is. It's, a it's even bigger than you think. Oh. All right. How much for this way? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd AMU. Times one, right? Yes. How about this it one? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 12 AMUs. 
But you know what? It's, 12 times it's still 12 times heavier. Oh. Now, be careful. This is where this is where the, the most important thing I would say today, okay? Now, that's a weird number to pick, isn't it? But it's huge, isn't it? But if I give you the same number, it doesn't matter whether I compare one atom to one atom or this many atoms to this many, it's still 12 times heavier, isn't it? You understand that? It just so happens, though, that if you give me this many atoms of hydrogen, you've given me uh, one mole of hydrogen atoms, and a mole is that number, and I don't care what it is. If you give me that many donuts, it's a mole of donuts. Yes. And it's like the word dozen. If you give me a mole of something, you give me that many. And so if I give you a mole of hydrogen atoms and I give you one mole of carbon atoms, we know that it's still going to be 12 times heavier. But here's the key. This is important. If you give me that many moles of hydrogen atoms, it will also have a mass. It's a lot of AMUs. That's true. But it also has a mass of one gram. And that's in the big world. I gave you so many hydrogen atoms that we can now start measuring it on that balance back there. I can now measure it in grams and I can do experiments in the big world. And what is the mass of one mole of carbon atoms? It's a whole lot of AMUs. It's also what? Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Now, wait. That's what most people don't get. When I look at the periodic table and I see that 12 next to carbon, it means two things. It means in the little tiny world, what's the mass of one carbon atom? 12 what? AMU. Yes. And when does that 12 mean 12 grams? That's exactly right. If I give you a mole of carbon atoms, and that's a lot of them, isn't it? Yeah. Then it'll be 12 what? Yeah. See, that number means two things. One's in the little world, and one's in the big world where I can do chemistry experiments. But guess what? Whatever's happening in the big world of grams, it's the same idea in the little world that I can't visit. Yes? So I can, there's like a there is. So anything that says like um, an atom, we think the little world, and then anything that says like, for example, would you say something like two a mole? hydrogen moles equals how many? One things? one mole is a lot. No, but like I'm saying, like how many? Like would there be that question there? How many grams is two hydrogen moles? Would that be two grams? Wait. Okay. Or good no, question. Two moles of yes. Atoms. Yeah. It's two grams. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what about two moles of carbon atoms? Yes, and guess what? It'd still be 12 times heavier than each other, wouldn't it? Oh. So here's, a, here's my story. The mole concept took what was happening in the little world and said, let's blow it up to a world I can study. And if I understand, and you guys, remember how you balance equations with coefficients? I don't think you ever knew exactly why you had to put coefficients there. But now you're going to know this. I'm going to show you what this means. Ready? Um, okay, I'll get it. All right. Give me about one minute here, okay? What? Okay, watch now. Let me show you something. Um, hydrogen and oxygen react to form water, don't they? Is this a balanced equation? Okay. There are two ways to interpret this equation. In the little world, two molecules of hydrogen will react with one molecule of O2 and make what? Two molecules of water. And that's in the little world. But guess what? And this is where it's great. What about in the big world? Two moles of hydrogen will react with what? 
one, that's a coefficient of one, one mole of oxygen to produce what? Two moles of oxygen. And that is pretty neat. Mm, is. Whatever is happening in the big world, in the mole world, the gram world, is happening in a little world also in the same way. All right, anyway, um, if you want to, uh, I, ha I will bring my book every day, and I have a camera. That's the good news. And I can show you anything I want to show you in a book. So if you don't want to bring your book, but when you go home, um, when we get this chapter, before we get this chapter done, tell yourself, my goal is I've got to look through that chapter and look for anything. I look at pictures, look at vocabulary words, and I, maybe I don't want to read the whole thing. And you don't have to. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Hope you had a nice day with uh, not having masks on today for some of you. Okay, I'm going to be here for about an hour. All right, bye, Carter. Bye. If you want to staple it together, uh, all the lab reports yeah, are in the middle. Hey, Matthew, you're pretty hot today. Man, you understood this. Thank you. You like numbers. Even though when I was growing up, subatomic meant protons, neutrons, electrons. Oh, oh, right, but then right. that got to be so old fashioned, then they started splitting, not the atom, they started splitting protons. And they called that the subatomic world, but it really is a subprotonic world. So some people still call that subatomic, but they should call it subprotonic. But uh, now you'll hear about leptons and quasar, I mean, not quasars, um, uh, uh, quarks. Yeah, sorry. And um, now we have, uh, they, they have baryons. There's all kinds of particles that they named. Uh, pi mesons. Um, and they each have their own little characteristic that they do. Uh, like. And then we have uh, up quarks and down quarks. Have you read about those? Uh, no, but that... There are ups and downs, and you, two ups and a down make this, two downs and an up make that. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard that, but that's... And, and, uh, and they have uh, things, particles they think held, hold things together. Mm -hmm. They call them gluons, like glue, gluons. So if you're the only people studying this, you get to make up some names yep. like that. Anyway, what's some of the names? Um, I know you've heard of... Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to word this, but you know, you say gluons, I mean, think of Klingons. Like, <laughs> it sounds kind of similar, but. Yeah. Uh, they, there's a lot of ons, aren't there? there. Um, so, yeah, but they, there's, so there's some funny names, and, um, you know, they were okay. The scientists are okay calling them gluons, so. though. Yeah. Some scientists would say, no, that's, that's not. That's not right. Yeah. And uh, some people like it. All right. Now you're, you're, you're okay on the lab test. Uh, what was your, would you just forget some of them? You just. I, 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 I think it was mostly the, uh, what you would call it, the. Uh, redox. I, I thought I got the equations down, but I guess I just copied them wrong on the thing, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. So I'll need to pay Who more was attention your, to what you write on the thing. Who was in your lab group? Because uh, when you had to do your lab write-up, didn't you have to write out the balance equations in there? Yes. Oh, okay. I just, but maybe on the review sheet you wrote down wrong. Yes, that's what okay. I was okay. thinking. I relied too much on the review sheet. Okay. It, yeah, probably a whole one. Either way, I hope you have a good afternoon. You too. Bye.